Hey guys, it's Cat the Cuber. So throughout cubing history, we've gone from something like this, a regular Rubik's Cube made by the actual brand Rubik's, to a cube like this, which has much more customization, like adjustable magnets or adjustable spring compression, to even a smart cube, something that you can connect to your phone that tracks your turning. So as you can see, speed cubing technology has advanced since its creation. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the advancements, the iterations, and the innovations that speed cubing technology has went through. And so, let's get started. So in the 2000s, maybe early 2010s, some people might have gotten this, a regular Rubik's Cube by the brand Rubik's, which is kind of notorious for having not great turning, kind of stiff, but what also existed in the early 2010s were manufacturers that made knockoffs or third parties of the Rubik's Cube. And what those cubes had were springs and screws. Now screws helped with just building the cube, but springs gave the cube kind of an elastic -y kind of feel, which kind of allowed you to turn more free-flowingly on your cube. Now what some of those manufacturers might have added alongside their cube were packs of different types of springs, which differed by how compressible they were. And so what cubers might have done was something called a spring swap, where they took out springs from their cube and replaced it with a different kind of spring, which gave a different feel in terms of elasticity. And so this leads me to the first innovation that I'll talk about. And it comes from GAN, who made the GAN Air, which came out in 2016. Now what the GAN Air had was something called a GES system, which had different colored nuts that differed by the kind of springs that it had inside. In other words, it was a more efficient way of doing a spring swap. However, what this system failed to do was fix a problem regarding tensioning. Like I said, there were screws on these cubes, and what cubers would do were tighten these screws with a screwdriver to kind of change the tightness of the cube. There was not really a way to ensure that your tension was the same on each side. You would kind of just remember, oh, one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn. And GAN came out with the GAN X. And the GAN X came out in 2018, which not only allowed you to change the compression of your springs, but also had a numerical system that allowed you to have the exact same tension on each side of the cube. And so if I were to have some kind of umbrella term that covers both the spring compression and the tension, I'm gonna call it the spring tension system. And so GAN was the first manufacturer to make a spring tension system. So now let's actually talk about a cube that I actually have. And I'm gonna talk about one of the most revolutionary innovations in speed cubing technology. And that is magnets. Now, in 2016, a company called thecubicle.com had a service where they took some of the most popular cubes at the time and glued in magnets into the pieces of the cube. And those magnets would attract the corner piece and the edge piece, and you could do this. And when you would turn the cube, you can feel each turn kind of locking into place. And it's kind of contributed by maintaining a kind of structured form factor in the cube, which made it more controllable. And what cubers noticed is that when they went back to a non-magnetic cube, it kind of felt flimsy. And so the magnets help kind of give it more structure. And not only did it enhance the scope of cubing technology, but also open doors to even more advancements and innovations. And it's easily a staple for any manufacturer who wants to make the next best cube to have magnets. Magnets was pretty revolutionary in speed cubing technology. Now GAN further enhanced this innovation by creating a system that allowed you to adjust the strength of those magnets. And they came out with the GAN X, which I also talked about previously. It came out in 2018. I don't have the cube right now, but I do have the GAN XS, which came out shortly after the GAN X. But what the GAN X had were capsules that you can replace. And if you replace the capsule with a different colored capsule, it would change the magnet strength. And so you can kind of customize it to a magnet strength that you found appealing to you. And what the GAN XS has is a similar concept but executed differently. It allows you to change the position of the magnets that 
change the feeling of the magnets when you would turn. And so GAN was the first cubing manufacturer to implement an adjustable magnet system. One cube that I will shout out is the Volk Elite, which is the successor of the Volk 3. Not only did this cube have magnets that attracted the corner pieces and the edge pieces, but it also had magnets on the center caps. And so they added two extra magnets to the edge pieces that attracted to those magnets on the center caps, which added even more spots for magnetic attraction. And this is probably a reason to why the cube has quite a structured feeling. And it's the only cube to have this kind of magnet system where it has magnets on the center caps. And so shout out to the Volk Elite. Now I'm gonna talk about another innovation to the magnet system, leading me to another GAN cube. As you can see, GAN cube is probably the most innovative cube company out there right now. And the GAN 11M Pro is one of my favorite GAN cubes. And so what's special about the GAN 11M Pro when it came out is that not only did it have magnets that attracted the edge pieces to the corner pieces, but the corner pieces also had magnets on its stock. What those attracted to were more magnets that were on the core. Now you were also able to pull out those stock magnets and replace them with different strength magnets too. And this further contributes to the idea of maintaining a good structured cube. Not only were edge and corner pieces attracted together, but it also attracts the corner pieces to the center of the cube. And some may feel that it kind of enhances the form factor of the cube, making it feel structured and maybe a bit more compressed, if you will. And what you might also see is that when you turn the GAN 11 and Pro, uh, when you slightly misalign, it kind of attracts back into place. And so the GAN 11 and Pro was the first cube to have core magnets. And GAN Cube's future flagship cubes also had core magnets. The GAN 12 had more protruding magnets. The GAN 13 not only had magnets that attracted to the core from the corners, but they also had magnets on the edge pieces that repelled the core magnets. Other cubes would also have their own version of the core magnet system. The Super RS3M by Moyu had ball core, which is basically a core magnet system, but the magnets in the core were in a ball. And it's also another trend that seems to be taking place in many flagship speed cubes. But now we're gonna talk about yet another innovation by GAN Cube. And so I'm gonna talk about the GAN 12. Now the GAN 12 had edge to corner magnets, corner to core magnets, but what's different about this cube when it came out is that it didn't have springs. Now, as I said before, cubes would have springs. This cube had a kind of alternative to springs called maglev. And what maglev was, was two repelling magnets. A spring would kind of push back when you squeeze it and the same would happen to two repelling magnets. And so that was kind of a substitute to springs. There might have been some friction coming from those springs. And now that this is kind of a frictionless system, uh, it might have made cubes a bit faster. And if you slightly misalign, it kind of has uh, more auto alignment that I mentioned before. And so GAN was the first manufacturer to implement maglev. And many other cubes that came after had maglev too. And so now we're gonna talk about kind of a different kind of speed cube technology, which is smart cubes. Now the first smart cube was released in 2018. It was called the Gicker Cube, and it allowed you to connect your cube to your phone and kind of track your turns. And this cube that I have, it's called the Moyu AI. And not only did it track your turns, but it also had a gyroscope that allowed you to sense how you're holding the cube. And some apps might tell you how many turns you've had, how efficient you were. It kind of helped you to see your statistics when it comes to 
yourselves. Now in the start, uh, smart cubes weren't the most well-performing cubes when it comes to just overall performance and turning, but as time passed, this cube came out and it's pretty good turning. But I will say this about smart cubes, and that is it's not something that cubers are super excited about today. And so to wrap things up, I'm going to talk about a modern cube that kind of summarizes the evolution of speed cube technology. And this is yet another GAN cube. It's the GAN 14, which came out in 2023. And so let's talk about the features in this cube. It has maglev. It has magnets that attract the edge and the corner pieces together. You can also adjust the edge magnets and the corner magnets. And it also has a core magnet system. The corners attract to the core magnets and the edge pieces repel the core magnets. And it also has holes on the corner pieces, which maybe uh, is there to reduce weight. And so yeah, what GAN also boasts is that it has 1,296 different customizational settings. And so that's kind of where speed cubing technology is today. As you can see, it's kind of, it's changed much since the original Rubik's Cube, and we may expect even more different cubing technologies to arise in the future. And so that is my rundown of the evolution of speed cubing technology. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I will also encourage you guys to use my discount code CATTHECUBER for 5% off your next order at thecubicle.com. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at CATTHECUBER. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.